Dá um ok quando começar, ok? Deixa eu ver. Let's see if he try. He, he, he got the, the slide presentation first. Acho que nós estamos yeah. ao vivo, né? I think we're live. Yes, we are live. Boa noite a todos, pessoal. Aqui Felipe Zerves, junto com Francisco Pimentel. Damos as boas-vindas a vocês. Temos hoje dois convidados especiais. Deixa eu pegar os currículos de ambos. Vocês sabem que esse ano a Plenary Lecture da ASCO 2020 de Mama, que não teve a Plenary Lecture porque foi virtual, era sobre um trabalho de tratamento loco-regional em pacientes com metástases de câncer de novo. Então, pacientes que no momento do diagnóstico apresentavam com metástase sistêmica. Foi muito esperado os resultados do ECOG CRIM 2108 apresentados pela doutora Simacan. Eu não vou entrar em detalhes sobre esse trabalho ou os outros previamente publicados, porque o nosso convidado, o professor Atila Soran, foi o principal investigador e o principal autor de um destes artigos, que foi o único dessas publicações que demonstrou benefício na cirurgia eh, ou no tratamento loco-regional em pacientes com carcinoma de mama metastático de novo. O trabalho da doutora Sima ainda não foi publicado, então acho que ainda é prematuro a gente tirar grandes conclusões antes de olhar essa publicação. Né? Então, antes de apresentar o, o doutor Atila, eu gostaria de apresentar a doutora Laura. Né? Laura, bem-vinda. A Laura é oncologista clínica da Rede Dora Oncologia e do ICESP em São Paulo. É um prazer te receber aqui hoje, Laura. Certo? Boa noite, Felipe. Muito, muito obrigada pelo convite. Queria agradecer a, também o, o doutor Pimentel. Uma honra estar aqui para discutir esse tema tão importante de cirurgia em pacientes metastáticas. E aproveitar para agradecer o doutor Milan, que, que me ligou para a gente estar aqui hoje à noite também do canal Câncer de Mama Brasil. Muito obrigada pelo convite. Vai ser uma honra discutir com você. Perfeito. Obrigado por ter vindo. E o, o, o professor Atila Soro, então, ele foi o principal autor do chamado Estudo Turco. Né? O professor Atila é, ele tem origem na Turquia, mas ele mora em Pittsburgh, nos Estados Unidos, há muitos anos já. E ele é professor of clinical surgery e é director do Breast Disease Clinical Research Program da University of Pittsburgh Medical Center nos Estados Unidos. Professor Soran, you have the ball, please. Ele vai fazer uma apresentação para nós, bem geral sobre isso, e depois nós vamos discutir o assunto. Thank you for coming, professor. Okay, first of all, sure. First of all, I would like to thank the invitation for all the uh, my colleagues in Brazil, and also I hope you all have safe days in Brazil and uh, keep this way all all year. So I'm going to talk about uh, stage four, the Nova stage four breast cancer, and why we are doing the surgery. I'm, I'm going to uh, share my slides, and I'm going to turn the camera off. Let's get it. I hope you got it. Did you get my slides? It's charging. It's charging. It's oh, coming. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. So we know that we are doing more and more surgeries in the stage four uh, de novo breast cancer. But let's start with a patient. We always frequently seeing this type of patients in our clinics, like 49-year-old premenopausal clinical T2 and 0 and 1, bone-only metastasis, ERPR positive and HER2 negative. So what are our options? Either we give only hormonal therapy. If it progress, we do the palliative surgery. We may choose uh, chemotherapy with the hormonal therapy, and again, wait until it progress and we may do the possible palliative breast surgery or you may think about giving the chemotherapy first and if there's a regression then you may do the surgery and if necessary radiation therapy and follow up with the hormonal therapy another option is you may think about uh, breast surgery first with the axillary evaluation at presentation follow radiation therapy if necessary and chemotherapy or hormonal therapy or you may not do any surgery to the breast, just to the intervention, surgery or radiation therapy following hormonal therapy in these cases, and those are our options. But what we know that metastatic, the you know, metastatic breast cancer incidence is around up to 10%. And 
and over the 25 years, survival has increased with the Dr. development Soren, of sorry. systemic therapy. Dr. Soren, also, sorry, yes. sorry. Can you enlarge your screen? Yes. Enlarge yes. your screen? Sure, sure. With a presentation view, I think it's come better from the guys from the, the, that are home here. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, yes, thank you. So, most of the times, when there is a stage four breast cancer, people think that there's no cure, which I don't like the term of the cure, uh, and they only got the systemic therapy, but there are a lot of retrospective studies show that you may do the surgery, which may prolong the overall survival, or prolong the progression-free survival, and there is a benefit for the local regional control. Of course, when there is an ulceration or bleeding, you may do the palliative surgery. This is always an option. When you look at the why we are doing the surgery, again, if there is a fungation, bleeding, ulceration, we are doing the palliative surgery. But as I said, there are a lot of evidence that shows uh, when you do the uh, more surgery to the primary site, there is a, a benefit to have a prolong, prolongation of the uh, survival. But in, there are some animal models. There is no human model, actually. There are all animal models saying that, which is a very old study, it's like 1997 or, or so. There may be a risk during the primary surgery, which may increase the metastasis, but it has never been showed in the clinical studies. What are the reasons why we are doing the primary surgery in stage four breast cancer? We know that primary tumor continues to dissemination of the disease, and we know that the primary tumor is a heterogeneous and there are more clones in the primary tumor. Even if you give the chemotherapy, some of the clones are resistant and they may progress. We know that if you do the primary surgery, you may increase the immune recognition. You can control the metastatic size controlling the primary tumor. And also you may possible that reducing the growth of the distance diseases by eliminating the primary tumor, which shows that in some cancers like colon cancer, ovarian cancer, melanoma, gastric cancer, when you do the surgery to the primary tumor, the uh, distance metastasis stays the same for a long time, or sometimes they reach the knowledge of disease, or maybe there are all the retrospective studies, there are maybe some selection biases. When you look at the studies, uh, this is very brand new, it's just accepted for one of my review for present uh, publication. I just picked the studies, recent studies, and the numbers like huge number, like 67,216,000 cases, something like this. And also I put the one of the study, which is the Akai 2014 study. They also do the surgery, primary surgery in de novo inflammatory breast cancer, de novo metastatic inflammatory breast cancer. So those are all the retrospective studies or meta-analysis show that really primary surgery works much, much better when you look at the overall survival or progression-free survival. But you ha we have to look at a little bit closer. When you do the primary surgery, you are eliminating local regional progression, which also shows that it may prolong the overall survival. But there are also some subgroup patients like bone-only metastasis, which may get more benefit based on the retrospective studies. Also, the age. When you do this type of surgeries, younger patients may get much, much benefit, get better overall survival. So those are all retrospective studies, but when you look at the meta-analysis, you can see that there are a lot of variables they look at it, like to stage metastatic site, number, HER2. Even if you look all the variables in different meta-analysis, there are always 30 to 40% more survival in the surgery side. This is the 2018, another big uh, meta-analysis showed the same thing. The hazard ratio is almost 
0.6%, which is like 35 to 40% less that with the primary surgery to the breast cancer. And when you look at the, those group uh, in the meta-analysis, they are they actually separated very good. They look at the patients who survive more than three years. They look at the studies, more than 1,000 patients. They look at the pa papers published uh, previously or recently, and they look at the uh, patient ethnicity, like American, Asian, European, all the stuff. They show that if you do the surgery, which they may have, much benefit in the survival in those all variables. And also they look at the surgery itself. I just want to point, point out in here one thing. Look at this margin. Please look at this margin. If the margin is negative, you have the survival benefit. It has a ratio of 0.61. But if the margin is positive, it is not significant. This is really important. So when you do the surgery, like the early stage cancer, you have to uh, focus and you have to target to get the margin negativity. And you have to also uh, evaluate the axilla. So but all the studies are really retrospective and they are all try to figure out which group has the benefit, like smaller tumors, fewer comorbidities, low burden of metastatic disease, less visceral metastasis, and the patients are coming to the better places, like more academic places, more breast surgery centers, they are getting the much benefit. So you need the randomized study, and you have to ask the question in, in two ways, actually. There are two ways to, you can ask the question. Which way is the better? The randomized study can show it to you. Either you can ask, let's give some chemotherapy or systemic therapy. If the distance metastatic size has no progression or regression, let's do the surgery or continue the systemic therapy. This is one way you can ask the question. Which is not the retrospective studies uh, show this one? None of the study, actually one or two studies, one is from MD Anderson, in the retrospective studies, they had similar thing that they give the chemotherapy nine months and they look at the patients if they have the uh, uh, survival benefit. And what they found, they found that if you do the surgery in three months, they got the benefit. But if you uh, keep giving the chemotherapy and if it goes nine months, there's no survival benefit. So our design on Turkey, MF010701, with the Netherlands and Australia is different. So if you are thinking that the bulking, sur the bulking surgery is the main part uh, in, your, in your hypothesis, so you should do the surgery at the presentation. So the hypothesis in, the, in our study was like, do the surgery at the, at randomize the patients, either get the systemic therapy or primary surgery at presentation and continue systemic therapy after the surgery as well. So there are two ways you ask the question. The first one from India study, they gave the chemotherapy first, and then if there's no progression, they do the local regional therapy, which is surgery, and if necessary, radiation therapy. But this, uh, this, uh, this, even if this is published in Lancet Oncology, which was a very flow study, I mean, uh, it really is not the good, the good study when you look at deeply just the basic look at the patients who had her2 positive tumor in the local regional therapy group 20 percent had her2 positive tumor but none of them get the herceptin in the non-local regional trip group 31 percent had the her2 positive and 15 percent received the uh, her2 blockage so this definitely changed your results and we know that some of the patients even if they uh, systemic therapy group, they received, their, uh, they underwent to the surgery, and this you cannot include those surgery, those patients in your final analysis because they received the, uh, they underwent to the surgery in some point, not for palliation, but they they just did the surgery, and also when you look at the uh, metastatic side and other stuff, there are some differences as well. Uh, so, of course, when you don't give the whole therapy, there is a differences between the survival, but does it came from the 
surgery or not, you cannot tell this. And uh, they couldn't see any differences in the surgery group, so surgery was not beneficial for these patients. But just basically look at this, this uh, slide. Actually, when you look at the numbers, like the death, the death in six months happening like right away. So you cannot include the patients who are, who are gonna die in three months, in six months. You have to exclude those patients because we are not doing the surgeries. If we know that they have no good uh, physical uh, condition, if they are gonna die in six months or three months. So they did not eliminate those patients as well. So they include everybody, even if they are not, they are very sick and they got the surgery. So this study has some conclusion that surgery is not, uh, is, uh, does not prolong the survival, but it uh, eliminates the local regional uh, progression. So this is similar design, which is presented in uh, ASCO 2020. Uh, it's similar design. They give the uh, chemo systemic therapy, and they, if there's no progression, they wait four to eight months, and they, they randomize for surgery or no surgery. Uh, primary goal is overall survival, and they look at the quality of life as well. So in this study, I'm going to focus on numbers in here. So look at the uh, progression. There were 390 patients, but 65 patients progressed. So if you wait too much, if you're, uh, if you wait too much, then it progress. And if it progress, of course, you get more problems uh, in the metastatic side as well. So if you are giving the chemotherapy upfront, you are eliminating the benefit of the surgery in the primary side, which is not gonna progress more likely and which may have the benefit for the overall survival. So this, and also when you look at the numbers, they have 14% crossover, which means that in some point, 14% of their patients underwent to the surgery. They uh, actually uh, compare the patients who were in the study, who were not in the study, they couldn't find much differences other than more triple, positive, triple negative patients were not randomized. And when you look at, this, at the, the therapy, most of the patients received chemotherapy plus or minus the uh, hormonal therapy. Just hormonal therapy was around 30%. This is interesting. I mean, in our study, we tried to eliminate the patients who had T4 tumor. But when you look at this study, it was interesting that they had around uh, 40, 45% either they had a skin invasion, skin nodules, or attached to the fascia, which means that they're all T4 tumors. So it will, you, were ex, you can expect that this patient is gonna get more progression if, if they have T4 tumors. I don't have the N numbers in here. They may have N2 tumors as well, which means more advanced primary tumors they included the study, I guess. And uh, based on the HER2 negative, positive, they didn't give the p-value, and I'm not sure if it is significant or not, but when you look at the systemic therapy, there are more single organ involvement, and there are uh, like 8% more. Patients had only one organ metastasis, but other than they were uh, similar in both groups. This is really interesting. Because, at, first of all, for 14 patients had not get the Three margins, 20 per.
Dr. Sora. O sinal do Wi-Fi do Dr. Sora não está muito bom, por isso que a gente pediu para cortar o vídeo dele para facilitar. Mas ele deve ter caído, provavelmente. Já, já ele volta. Dr. Sora, can you hear? O sinal do Wi-Fi do Dr. Sora não está muito bom, por isso que a gente pediu para cortar o vídeo dele para facilitar. Mas ele deve ter caído, provavelmente. Já, já ele volta. Bom, então, enquanto ele não comenta, Laura, vamos aproveitar que você está aqui, né? Vamos lá, vamos trabalhar. É. Olha, eu acho que é, é muito bacana ver ele falando dos outros, dos outros trabalhos, mas acho que a gente também tem que, tem que ouvir do trabalho dele, né? Que também tem algumas preocupações, especialmente do desbalanço de pacientes, né? E se isso seria a causa é, da positividade. Ele colocou com bastante ênfase que nesses trabalhos que foram negativos, tanto do, do Equal Gay Cream, que foi apresentado agora na plenária, quanto do outro estudo oh, ano, a questão da randomização... É, ser feita de início, mas que as pacientes recebiam tratamento sistêmico é, como primeira terapia e, e não cirurgia como Forte. primeira terapia. Então, eu, eu acho muito complicado hoje em dia, especialmente em uma era onde você tem tratamentos sistêmicos é, é, com excelentes respostas, é, seja em, em qual subtipo que você tiver, hoje a gente tem é, muitos avanços da época que essas pacientes foram randomizadas, seja em dor de CDK, seja duplo bloqueio, seja em imunoterapia, seja o que for, é, o tratamento sistêmico mudou muito. E você não oferecer isso upfront para uma paciente metastática, hoje em dia, eu acho complexo a gente randomizar uma Excuse paciente me. sem testar a sensibilidade. Hi, Dr. Sora. Can you hear? Perfeito, Laura. Tem razão. O desenho do estudo dele não, não me parece o ideal, apesar de ter dado resultado. <risos> Dr. Clara, can you hear us? Eu acho, Felipe, que o que ele está que ele está relatando nesses estudos é que o não é que ele está pregando começar o tratamento com cirurgia, é o desenho do estudo que dificulta. Yeah, I, I can hear you, but there was a. Can you hear us? If you'd like to share your your presentation another time. Mitel, tu não tem a apresentação dele? Yes, I have. I'll continue. So in this study, they said that even okay. if there is no survival benefit, if systemic disease is not progression, local regional therapy may be considered. Can you hear me? Yes. You can hear. Uh, problem failing again, doctor. Yeah, there's a lot of back noises. I don't know where. Can you hear me and see the plus? Now we see the slide with your work. Slides. I protest. Yes, we can see your I slide. said one of the hypotheses can have Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. But Can you hear me? Yes. Waiting for these lights. We uh, run. Right away after, uh, 
Porque ele tem até o, o autor, apresenta lá, todos lá. os slides e ele, ele, ele debate em cima dos slides que tu está passando. Dr. Foran, we have a little problem in, in putting your slides and your voice together. Maybe we can share your slides. Pimentel has your slides. And you talk over your slides while Pimentel is going passing by. I don't know. Maybe you can do so. Do you have Pimentel? Pimentel, do you have his slides? Yes. Can you share the screen? Is that okay, doctor? Sure, go ahead. Okay, let, let's say let's see if it works. Okay. This is just for uh, everybody to experience. Asco as well had some connection <laughs> issues, yeah. so we're just trying to get the real experience for everyone. Did you see, Dr. Thorne, like the third world, the internet works, eh? <laughs> everything, everything is cool. That's fine. Yeah, okay. We're sorry about that. Let's see. If, so if you go to my... Uh, M M M you are trying to share? Yes, I'm trying, guys. That's it. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. So you're here, right? You you stop here, doctor, in this slide. This is the one. That's good. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Can you make it bigger? I cannot see my slide. <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm trying. I'm, I'm not so good in this. That computer. was a good one, Dr. Soren. So if, if it's easier for you, you can say to Pimentel and the next one, the next one, then uh, he'll, he'll make this. Can you see, guys? Yes. No, oh, that's a black. Maybe Pimentel connections is not so good as well. We were just bragging about our internet. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to make the whole screen. Ari, can you oh. help me? Quer colocar um maisinho pelo menos, mesmo que não fique no, na, na tela cheia, mas pelo menos com um zoom? Está em PDF, Pimentel? Sim. Yes. Está em PDF. Ah. Ari, can you help me? Pode me ajudar, Ari, com a tela cheia? Command mais return. Lê o nosso chat privado, Pimentel. Quem sabe faz ao vivo, né, pessoal? Aqui é confusão. Vamos lá, né, Laura? Exatamente. Pimentel. Doutor, can you hear us? Just stay like this. I can't hear you. Slides and can you can you see the slide now? Is it okay? I'm gonna let you know to go. Just stay there. That's good. They're all good. Just, yeah, objectives. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna start from here again. Okay. Our uh, primary uh, the quality. To fly, uh, overall survival and secondary was the quality of life, of course. Let's see where it is. Okay, the next slide, the method. So I want everybody to focus. The next slide, uh, surgery part. So our goal, like the early stage breast cancer, try to reach the free surgical margin. This was the must in our study. And also auxiliary clearance if clinically, and patients should go to the uh, whole radiation therapy, must take them radiation therapy 
based on the disease action of practice. And surgery to the metastatic side, at least. Patients receive the chemotherapy plus her, uh, her, two, blood, uh, her two positive. None of them uh, just didn't receive the uh, her two. The sound is not okay. It's the blockage, and also they. Uh, your slide is behind. If you go two more. One more. Okay, so when you look at the patients, we are we were trying to balance, but there was some pro, some uh, weakness in our study because more ER PR positive patients were in the systemic side, a surgery side, and uh, the triple negative patients a little bit more in the systemic side as well. The next slide, please. And our patients actually around 50 percent had bone only metastasis and uh, most of the patients had the solitary bone metastasis as well slides all gone i cannot see your slides okay you, you can see it i can't i mean i see my i can't see your screen is all blank okay back had in this yep, pool. It's come. Yep, yep, that's good. That's good. Great. So again, most of the patients had bone only metastasis, and in bone only metastasis, most of the patients had solitary bone metastasis. Next slide, please. So when you look at the overall survival, in the first three years, there was a opening between the there was a, a benefit on the surgery, but it was not significant, scientifically significant. In five years, there was a statistically significant overall survival benefit in the surgery side. And next slide, when you look at the 10 years follow-up, which we presented this in 2019 in San Antonio, there is a much significant difference in, between the surgery on in comparing the no surgery. So, if you wait long enough, you can see the differences. This is happening because we have more, we have better systemic therapy options. Patient received the trastuzumab, pertuzumab. They are get, getting the hormonal therapy, CDK for six inhibition, or they are getting more therapy than better therapy. So if you wait long enough, you can see the differences and which happened in our, in our in our study as well in 10 years. Next slide, please. So if you look at the subgroup in five years, 10 years, this is the 10 years result. ERPR positive patients, there is a hazard ratio 0.71, which means that 30% more patient survived when they have the primary surgery. Next slide, please. And HER2 negative, the same way, the patients live longer when they have the uh, surgery at presentation. Next slide. But there was no significant difference. Actually, surgery was not good in triple negative patients, which uh, almost all patients died, only one patient still alive, and there was no statistically significant difference if you do the surgery or not. Age, again, young age was statistically significant in three years, five years, and 10 years. Around 30%, more than 30% patients younger than 55 years old, they lived uh, more uh, compared to the systemic therapy. Next slide. In the first five years, solitary bone metastasis patients lived longer in the surgery group. In 10 years, 16% were still alive and surgery was statistically more significant in those patients. Uh, when you look at the median, median survival, 
in the surgery group, it was 49 months. In the systemic therapy group, they all died and the median survival was 30, 35 months. So there was 14 months uh, better survival in the surgery group in bone only, solitary bone only metastasis. Next slide, please. But there was no statistically significant difference in multiple bone metastasis. So if the patient has multiple bone mat, uh, there is not much differences in 10 years as well. Next slide, please. When you look at the force plot, uh, again, you can see in 10 years, ER positive patients age less than 55 and solitary bone metastasis patients had better survival. And when you, we see in the 10 years, HER2 positive patients also lived longer if they received, they underwent to the surgery at presentation. So either HER2 positive or HER2 negative, you are eliminating the uh, primary, you are doing the surgery, eliminating the clones, and then the patient lives longer. Next slide, please. It was in five years the same, and then 10 years, again, the HER2 positive patients came, the, uh, the, the studies show that HER2 positive and HER2 negative patients live longer in the surgery group as well. When we did the multivariant analysis, not including the surgery because surgery is already randomized, what we see that if the patient is younger and if the patient has using biphosphonates, they are living longer, which means that uh, surgery itself uh, giving a more benefit to the younger patients. So in our 10 years follow-up, 22% of the surgery group and 7% of the systemic therapy group were alive. This is not only surgery, but because of the systemic therapy works much, much, much better when you compare 10 years ago. Median survival was around 11 months more in the surgery group. In the solitary bone metastasis group, uh, uh, survival is more than 14 months longer uh, in, this, in the surgery group as well. Younger patients live longer and uh, hormone receptor patient, patients live longer when you compare the uh, hormone receptor negative patients and this is significant in the surgery group as well. Next slide, please. Now go all the way next slide. One more. Yep. Yeah. So we also try to understand do the analysis the patient who lives lived at least five years. So the cutoff is five years. When you look at the patients who lived five years in the univariant analysis, surgery, hormone receptor positivity, and hormonotherapy, and also the biphosphonate. Uh, uh, usage were significantly important, but when you look at the multivariant analysis, only surgery was significantly important. So it showed that actually the patients live longer than five years in the surgery group only. The next slide, please. So our conclusion in 10 years showed that surgery or local regional therapy has 58% per, higher chance for the patients who may live at least five years, comparing the patients who had only systemic therapy. So we think that discuss these findings with the patients for the surgery. Surgery when the patient has the deal actually in the some point the surgery uh,
Next slide. Next slide. Physical composite score and mental composite score, and we compare the patients. Yeah, that's good. We compare the patients with the systemic group and surgery. Also, uh, randomly pick the stage one to three patients and compare the quality of life in the early stage group as well. Next slide, please. Yeah, so when you look at the numbers, as you can see that physical composite score, mental composite score are similar in the system and surgery group. But when you look at the physical composite score, it is less in the stage one and three groups, and it is less than general population, which you can expect because the patients are receiving the chemo. therapy whole time so they are fatigued they have and when you look at the age differences next slide please. composite score next slide their 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 physical status okay stay there please yeah when you look at the surgery group or local regional therapy bigger up comparing to systemic therapy group additional daily activities if they have an energy or not so actually when you wait three Years or more compare the patients who had systemic therapy or surgery there's no differences in their quality of the mentally they are much better similar to the early stage cancer similar to the general population but the physical physically they are uh, less uh, active they have problems because they are taking the te uh, systemic therapy for a lifetime next slide please so we end up the conclusion for quality of life. The toxic effects of continuous systemic treatment might be the cause lower scores of quality of life comparing to the general population and the early cancer population. So it's not sim the same with the ACOG Akron trial, which we show that surgery is not changing the quality of life. It's not making worse. The next slide, please. So let's compare these two. And I'm going to finish after comparing. So first of all, ECOG trial, when they started, their number for statistically 886 patients. After we had a discussion with the PI as well, they lower it to 300. So they eliminate their stratification. Next slide, please. So even if we published our study showing that three-year survival is not 30%, not 40 percent other studies also published and showing that the current knowledge what we know in 2000 since 2013 the overall survival either systemic group or not in the metastatics it is more than 40 percent so but they did the statistical uh, prediction again they put the 30 percent to 40 percent which is the knowledge from the 2007 when we did the study, systemic therapy changed. People are living longer. And then what they found, again, they found the same thing. In the systemic therapy group, patients lived 60, 67% more than three years. And the surgery group, 68%. So when they did the statistics, they didn't consider this survival good. And also, when, again, I said, look at the surgery group and I had the slide, they had only 900, uh, 109 patients treated surgically. Even if they randomized 125, there were 10% patients didn't get the surgery. They included the analysis. 
they didn't do the multivariant analysis and also they around 20 percent of their patient never received the complete resection they had uh, 80 percent had the tumor free surgical margin so you cannot say that we did the surgery we eliminate the primary tumor if the surgical margin is positive next slide please their skin invasion satellite nodules fa fascia invasion was up to 44 percent which is high and their 48 percent had n2 or n3 patients so these patients had even if, think about they had no metastasis, they had stage three tumors. So you were expecting the survival is less in these patients, of course. And they, I'm not sure why they didn't exclude those patients, but looks like one of the inclusion criteria was uh, T4 and T3 and, and two patients. And we didn't know what they did to the axilla. There's no information if they did the axillary surgery. There's no information how many patients receive the post mastectomy radiation therapy? How many patients receive the whole, radi whole breast radiation? How many patients receive the whole regional uh, axillary supraclavicular radiation therapy? I, uh, there, it's not in the presentation. And I guess they are going to put all this information to the publication. We may see all details in the, in the paper. We may uh, understand much better. They didn't do the subgroup analysis. I don't. We don't see the bone metastasis only patients. What happened if they survival better or not? So we have to see this subgroup analysis in the paper as well. Again, they put the patients, uh, and when you look at the median follow up, the patient has zero months follow up, which means that they died, because this is five years follow up patients. So if the patient died in the first thirty days. Either it is because of the surgical uh, approach, which we are not expecting any patients died because of the breast cancer surgery. They should mention it, but typically you shouldn't put up to six months patients in your analysis if they die early. This means that those patients were very sick and you include the uh, patients to the surgery arm, which is a little bit uh, different which, uh, from our study but may, we may get more information when the pa paper is published. So they said that uh, uh, the, the surgery there are not uh, recommending, but even if you look at the echo ekran study, if you don't do the surgery, you, you may eliminating the possibility of long-term no evidence of disease and or cure, because what we know that around 10% of the patients after the surgery, after the systemic therapy, they, are, they have no evidence of disease. All liver mat is gone or breast is gone and they live long, longer. So you are eliminating this possibility, which is almost cure or remission for a lifetime. What we believe that this therapy, local therapy should be case by case discussed in the tumor board. We don't say that, I don't say that everybody needs to do surgery, but there should be an option needs to be discussed with the patient and the tumor board. You should look at the, uh, you should look at the performance status, age, comorbidity, the metastatic sites, the burden of the disease, if you can do the complete resection or not. You should look at the axillary surgery, radiation therapy if the patient needs, you should check the optimal systemic therapy regimen, intervention to the metastasis. So you have to discuss in your tumor board all these options and then come with an idea. Next slide, please. What we believe that, like any diseases, the NOAA stage four breast cancer should be personalized. You should ask surgery or radiation therapy to the primary. You should ask surgery or radiation therapy to the axilla. What type of the surgery you should do it? What type of intervention you are going to do it? Is solitary bone metastasis different than the other metastatic breast cancer? We should do more surgery, less surgery. We should consider doing the radiation therapy, cyber knife to the uh, bone or not. Those are the things you need to discuss. 
And also when you look at NCCN guidelines, they say the same thing. This needs to be discussed in the tumor board with all the specialities to end up if the patient needs a surgery or not. The next slide, please. So there are still ongoing studies looking for either the primary surgery works, do we need to give the chemotherapy? Do we, should we do the uh, radiation therapy to the metastatic side or not? There are a lot of randomized or uh, prospective studies ongoing. In Turkey, we are doing the BOMET study, which we are done. This is a registry study, bone only metastasis patients. Either they received only systemic therapy or they got the surgery at presentation or after the systemic therapy. So we have three groups right now. We are planning to present, we present the preliminary data in uh, in, uh, in American source in, uh, I think, Miami and also some in the American College of Surgeons in, in 2019. Now we are preparing the final uh, data analysis for San Antonio. Next slide, please. So let's go back to the R patient. 49-year-old premenopausal patient, clinical TN, T2N0M1, biopsy proven, or at least two images shows that bone only met, ERPR HER2 positive, uh, ERPR positive, HER2 negative. Uh, I hope some of the surgeons may, maybe they can, first I present the case, they were thinking only systemic therapy, but after my presentation, some of them may consider to discuss this patient in your tumor board, and possible surgery, upfront surgery can be an option. So I'm done right now. I hope you get some uh, good information which may help your uh, clinical practice. And if there's any question, I can take. Thank you, Dr. Sar. You can turn on your camera now. Yes, please turn on our camera, Dr. Sar. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we all agree that we must wait for the publication of the trial. Uh, you, 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 phrased it, you, you, you're talking about it, and then we are discussing the presentation, but we have to see the publication, of course. I would ask Laura to make those comments, Laura, that you did when Dr. Soren was out a few minutes ago about the the timing of systemic treatment, and we we think about it um, and we agree about it. I agree with you. Please comment with Dr. Saran, Laura. Yes, uh, thank you so much for your presentation. I think uh, one for, before uh, stating what I said before, uh, I think one of the most important things for patients and for metastatic patients, uh, the novo metastatic patients, I think tumor boards are uh, something that all patients need to be discussed uh, with a multi-professional team that's where the, the best clinical advice for, for this patient will come from. So I agree 100% that we should discuss with all specialties before we go uh, for one specific therapy or a plan of sequence, uh, sequencing therapies. Uh, what, what I was saying before, Dr. Soren, is that um, I understand that the trial design of uh, operating up front but for some patients, uh, this might not be feasible for all of them. And with the new systemic therapies for all, um, for all the subtypes, uh, for HER2 or for uh, uh, ER positive patients and triple negative, we have new systemic therapies for those patients were randomized. We have now uh, better access to um, dual blockage for HER2. We have immunotherapy, not for all patients, and triple negative, and you have CDK4 inhibition for uh, many patients in, in, in all of our countries now. So I think today to offer a, a surgery upfront for these patients uh, might not be something we'll do. I think the patient you showed, uh, the, case, the clinical case you showed, is, is one specific case when we think it's a T2 and zero patient with one bone, one uh, solitary bone metastasis. And one of the things I, I like to point out in this population that we consider um, uh, surgery in, in any case, in, in, in either upfront or after a few months of systemic therapy is that um, we 
we we don't talk we i don't see in the publication specifically what was done to the metastatic places so if we've done uh radio surgery for a bone mat only uh, patient if we've done uh ablations for hepat hepatic metastatic sites so i think we should approach this patient as a local therapy for the breast tumor but maybe there is a place also for uh, radiation or other local therapies for the metastatic tumors. And I, I'd, I'd like to ask you a question that came up from Dr. André Matar, which is a breast surgeon here in Brazil, about your randomization program in your trial. Because we've seen in the cog acrine and in your trial as well, the triple negative patients have worse prognosis uh, uh, than others. We, we know that, but that they don't derive as much benefit from surgery. And there was an imbalance between the arms. In, in the systemic therapy, there were more triple negative patients. And we always are concerned that this might have changed uh, the results if it wasn't like that. So the question was, what was the program you used for randomization? From Dr. Andrea Matera from the chat. It's a computer. Yeah, it's a computer computer program, just randomized with the computer. We, what is we did not do any stratification. What's that? Uh, it was a block. We didn't, we didn't do the stratification from no case by case. Case by case randomization. When the patient was came and the center randomized either surgery or systemic therapy. It's not the block. So the the one thing is stratification. We didn't do any stratification based on 2007 knowledge because we didn't know what to stratify. This is not the early case, early stage breast cancer. This is the metastatic breast cancer. Every variables were significant. And either in echo trial, I showed you, they start the stratification with the 880 patients, then they eliminate most of their stratifications after we published our study. Because it's not possible to stratify every single thing because the metastatic tumor is not the early stage breast cancer. That's why we had differences in triple negative and we had some differences in the ER positive cases. But all the studies, even the meta-analysis, everything showed that in triple negative cases, there is not much benefit for surgery. So that's what we found, and that's why uh, SEMA ECRAN trial found it. So we do not, but there are some, some differences. Think about that the patients have triple negative cancer, you give the chemotherapy, which we had a patient like this, all liver mat is gone. The, she pay, she only has breast cancer. So in this, this case, you may consider the surgery because systemic therapy works and eliminates the metastasis. So the other thing is you are asking, you said that, what did you do in the systemic side? 38% in both groups in our study received some type of radiation therapy or surgery to the bone or liver or lung, but there was no differences statistically in the both group, so we cannot say there is a benefit doing any intervention to the metastatic site, but our study is not focusing this, so we cannot say really it works or not. You know, there is a study, Sabre Comet, which was published in phase two, showed that radiation therapy, cyber knife or any radiation therapy to the metastatic site prolongs the survival. So I agree with you. If the patient has, like the case I presented, if you do the breast surgery, you may consider doing the radiation therapy to the bone mat to uh, to get a better survival. But for the systemic therapy, when you are going to give it, this is always a question. Based on ACOG trial, based on Indian trial, giving upfront surgery doesn't work. So, so it is, but. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work everybody because there are other studies, even the retrospective studies show that some cases, even if you give the systemic therapy upfront, it may work, patient may get the benefit and you can do the surgery. And the study from MD Anderson said that either it's better to do the surgery if you are giving the systemic therapy in between the three to six months, not to wait nine months. This is a retrospective study but it gives some idea if you wait too long, 
then the patient may get the resistance to the systemic therapy and they may, they may get new dissemination to other sites. The other thing is why we are thinking that presentation, because we are thinking that debulking is the most significant thing. You should eliminate the clones, that they are resistance to the systemic therapy. It doesn't matter, it's immunotherapy, chemotherapy or systemic therapy. There are some clones, they are resistance. So if you don't do the surgery, and then you do the systemic therapy only, these clones are gonna disseminate, see it, and then patient gonna get progression. Like in ACOG, ACOG trial, around uh, 30, uh, 20%, they exclude the patients because they progressed, which is normal, which uh, systemic therapy, even if you give it, some clones are not responding, and those patients are progression. There's no uh, answer if, I mean, if think about that, you do the surgery for these patients before it progresses, they may get the benefit, they might get the benefit, but we don't know because they didn't do the surgery. In our group, maybe those patients live so, uh, longer because we eliminate these clones, which may cause the progression. We don't know because we didn't, nobody did the study just focusing the patients who progressed. So there's no such study. Maybe it's a good idea to do it, but there's no such study. So what we are saying is like colon cancer, like lung cancer, renal cancer, melanoma. When you eliminate the primary primary tumor, then your systemic therapy works much much better in the systemic in the metastatic site. Otherwise, your systemic therapy may not work. So surgery has no benefit for these patients as well. But it's not for everybody. You should discuss with your tumor board who may get the benefits. There are some patients, they may get the systemic therapy first, then surgery in some point. But some patients, like bone mat only, highly consider to do the surgery up front, and then CDK inhibition works much, much better, baby. I, don't, I, I mean, this is what we found, actually. Now the BOMET study, which we are going to present, hopefully in San Antonio, which we presented in American College of Surgeons, exactly shows the same thing. Bone-only metastasis, either you give the systemic therapy up front or do the surgery up front, and they all, all works much better than systemic therapy alone. So what we are saying is bone-only mat, oligomat, less than three, three uh, bone mats, they are going to work much better, which patient may get better survival. Thank you. I think we resume in two more board and patient selection. You have yeah. just, yeah. May I tell something from the chat? Yes, uh, I have a, actually a, a comment and a question with uh, Darley. Pode colocar para nós? Dr. Darley, às 8h54. Do you believe that uh, surgery should only be offered to patients with a clear understanding of the risks and cost of such therapy. It's important to expand their survival benefits. Uh, can you comment, uh, Dr. Sora? So, uh, yes, do you believe that local regional therapy should only be offered to patients with a clear understanding of risk? Sure, I mean, you should discuss with the patient this option and you should discuss all the risk. Of course, there is a, a cost including with this, but even if we, without the randomizations, I showed you like 60,000, like 200,000 patients underwent those type of surgeries before any randomization or before any studies. So in the United States, SEER data and National Cancer Database, when you look at the data retrospectively, most of the patients stage four breast cancer underwent the surgery without knowing the benefits. The surgeon do the, did the surgery. So, but now we have randomized studies. We have prospective, retrospective studies. We can discuss those options with the patients more clearly, and you have to discuss all the benefits. In our study, Actually, what we did first, we look at the, if the surgery has any side effects or increase the mortality or not in the first 30 days, in the first 60 days, and in the first year. We couldn't find differences between the groups. 
So the surgery is not increasing the mortality just for the surgery. It's not like in the 30 days mortality increase or it's not like in the short term mortality increases. Patients die because of neutropenia or infection or something other than the surgery, but it is not the surgery itself. So, uh, I have another question here, doctor, from Fabricio. Uh, it's 9 p.m. Can you put, please, Harry? Uh, in your study, did you perform or offer reconstruction for patients undergoing mastectomy? That's a great question. We did not. Uh, around 30% had only a segmental mastectomy and uh, around 70% had a mastectomy, but none of them underwent the reconstruction. It is not our study protocol. It's just the uh, patient's and physician's preference. We did not say get the radiation um, reconstruction or not. This was not the protocol, including or excluding criteria. Do you believe Dr. this can change of uh, the quality of life of the patients? Yeah. Would change if uh, we offer? Uh, uh, it may, it may not. I cannot tell. It may, but what in the United States, what we are doing, if stage four cancer, uh, I mean, if the decision is the mastectomy in stage four, you know what? If the patient asking the reconstruction, we do offer reconstruction in here. In Turkey as well, right now they're offering, but when we did the study, think about this 2007. So we were not offering too much or it's, it was up to the surgeon to offer it or not, but most of the patient, because when you say the patient, you have a metastatic cancer, there's no cure. They don't think the reconstruction much. They think they are survival. So, but now what we are telling the patients, even if you have a stage four cancer, your survival next five to 10 years is 40%, 20%, 10 years. So they may consider the reconstruction right now, but not previously because when you say to the patient, you are going to die in three years, they don't think the reconstruction much. It may change the uh, it may change the quality of life. Uh, there is another question here from Andre Mata, 9 on 7 p.m. Uh, do you think that sentinel, sentinel lymph node biopsy, clear margins, and radiation therapy should be offered as you in the no metastatic scenario? Exactly. This is, this is the thing that, uh, that's a good question. This is the thing. When you consider de novo stage four breast cancer, and if you are thinking the surgery, the surgery, all the guidelines, everything should be the same like stage one to three breast cancer. You should forget the metastasis. You should offer every single thing, sentinel biopsy, if necessary, accelerate the section, Radiation therapy, if necessary, clear margin, definitely. So you should do everything to the local side to eliminate the tumor. Including axillary dissection in the case of uh, axillary disease? To obtain free margins? And... It's up to you. I mean, it's the because. Yeah. On your trial, you did. I mean, you know that we are not doing the axillary oh, yeah. dissection. Yeah, but uh, when you did a trial, you did yeah, it. In our trial, we did the yeah. yeah. Correct. Um, in our trial, we did the axillary dissection if sentinel is positive. But it's after right this in your paper. trial and other <laughs> studies, you can consider. Yeah, yeah, it is in our study, yes. But yeah, yeah. I mean, nowadays it changed. Again, our our study design yeah, was 2007. 2007. Now yeah. it's 2020. Dr. Sora, do you so think you may consider some patients as tradition? Yeah. Do you think that this problem yeah. of not reconstruction uh, could answer for the no benefit of quality of life even in the Sima Khan study? You saw that on, the, on her presentation there was no difference in quality of life in those patients that did the surgery versus those that didn't need the surgery. We don't have the publication, but we can we can think that maybe. They didn't reconstruct it either in the United States. Don't you think so? 
I, I didn't listen to her. I have her presentation. I have a communication with her. She didn't give me any information about the reconstruction. I have no idea they did it or not. I don't know how many had the reconstruction. If they she, separate she didn't, the reconstruction. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't tell you in the presentation. She didn't say She didn't say in the presentation. Yeah, so I'm not. Yeah. Right. I so think I this know. is this very is important. I think it's very important to women reconstructing, even in metastatic setting. I, I think uh, in, in this pandemic was the first time we discussed not 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 doing reconstruction after mastectomy. It's it's been years since we don't see a case that you need a mastectomy and you do not give her uh, proper reconstruction. So I think nowadays if someone needs a surgery in stage four, it would be very strange not to offer reconstruction for them. Doctor, uh, I agree. I mean, it's whoa, go ahead. It's a good, it's a good uh, point. But in our quality of life questions, mastectomy or reconstruction was not in the quality of life. We used SF12. SF12 is only considering physical well-being or mental well-being. It's not your shape or your, you know, symmetry or something or pain. So it's a good question. I'm not sure their quality of life questionnaires, if they included the, you know, physical appearance or not. But this is maybe they can explain us in the in their paper. Uh, Doctor Sora, uh, you have another question about indication of surgery. Just to clarify, you think that uh, the population between the Simakan study and the your study. Besides the the scenario is the same, but the population is different uh, in terms of uh, disease burden and uh, determine the, the different results. The population is uh, not the difference. That difference actually, they were young patients like us. Uh, the patient population, I don't know what. Do they mean? I mean the bone mat. There, yeah, bone there is a difference from the bone metastasis because they have, yeah, they had twenty percent, thirty percent. We have fifty percent. Yeah. So there are differences in the metastatic side. That's why we end up the bone mat subgroup is the patients may get the much benefit from the surgery. So we didn't say the visceral mat patients may get the benefit because our study didn't show the visceral mat patients get survival benefit from the surgery. This should be not our conclusion. Our conclusion is that some patients with the bone mat get some benefit prolongs to survival. But again, our study, the 50% had the bone mat only. I didn't, I don't know. They, they didn't show the subgroup analysis. I'm not sure they talk about this in the presentation or not. But they don't have the bone only met group survival if they have any benefit or not. Yes. Uh, you have a question from Eduardo Milling about Dr. Joint... Pedro Barros, Pimentel. Yes. Acho que é importante. Yes. Uh, before Milling, Pedro Barros, 9 p.m. Ari, please. In your practice, have you indicated surgery only in isolated bone methods? Mets? Not only, I mean, again, based on the study, bone mat patients have much benefit, but there are cases, again, I said the same thing over and over, you should discuss with your tumor board because patients like last week, we had the liver mat patients, which the systemic therapy eliminate all, which is biopsy proven liver mat. And then chemo, systemic therapy eliminate the liver mat. Now we are doing the breast surgery to her because there's no metastasis anymore which she may reach the no evidence of disease which shows that there's a lot of survival benefit so you have to discuss with your tumor board and you should look at the patient age patient tumor burden patient comorbidities and all the stuff but bone mat is more our focus because what i believe personally in next five to ten years bone mat is going to be stage something differently either stage 3d 4a or something because bone mat is not dying anymore like in 
five, ten years. They live 20 years or more. With those systemic therapies, you may get the remission for a lifetime. So it may change in the future. Bone mat is a little bit different metastasis from the other mats. Uh, doctor, how do you evaluate your bony mats only? Do you biopsy them? How do you evaluate your bony mats? That, you, Tu não leu o artigo do cara? <laughs> this is a, this is a... Yes, I did. He, he's, he's, asking great, he's asking a question, but this is like every time I got this question. So I'm prepared, yeah. don't worry. <laughs> so the bone, bone biopsy is not simple. You cannot do the bone biopsy to everywhere. And even if you do the biopsy, most of the times you don't have enough cells to diagnose the metastasis. The ideal, yes, it should be done, the bone, bone mat biopsy to get the conclusion that the patient has a bone metastasis. But if there is no biopsy, even if there is not enough tissue for the diagnosis, if there are two images concordance, if there are if you have a good imager and they know what they are looking for, like PET scan, bone scan, CT or MRI, whatever you have it, if you have two of them saying exactly the same thing, this is no question, it's a bone mat, 98 or 99% it is a bone mat. There's a Danish study, an MD Anderson study, they compared the bone mat to the images. It is either 99 or 98.5% they are concordance. That's why in our study, we accept it's a bone mat if there's two images exactly saying there's a bone mat. Uh, uh, Let's make please. the last question. This that just got in, Pimenta, what do you think? The last question from Patrice. Yeah. Let's, let's forget kneeling. So what do you think, uh, Dr. Starr, what do you think about change the upfront surgery to breast and axilla for radiation therapy. Ari, Patricia Marques questions, please. Patricia Marques, please. Yeah, so there is no study. There's only one study from France, uh, which is a retrospective study mentioning the upfront radiation therapy, which may similar effect like surgery. There are some studies I showed in my presentation ongoing about this. Uh, if we can get some uh, more data, there may be an option for some patients to do the upfront radiation therapy instead of doing the surgery. But for now, surgery is the option like, like early stage breast cancer. You don't do the radiation therapy for early stage breast cancer. You do the surgery first because there's no way the radiation therapy eliminates the breast cancer. It only gives a adjunct therapy to uh, decrease the local regional recurrence. So it is not, I'm, I, I cannot right now offer radiation therapy up front, but we'll see in next five years if there's any data in some patients we may offer it. Please. Thank you, Dr. Please. Soren. Laura, your last comments, please. Uh, thank you very much for this great discussion, Dr. Soren. And I'd like to, to add to that discussion that I think uh, in, in the years from now on, in the trials that we're going to see results in the next years, I think we're going to see even um, a population that can even benefit more when we're talking about bone-only meds or uh, single meds of other sites that our patients that are now being screened with uh, PET scans, so in, in their stage, sorry, they're being staged with PET scans, and we might see a population that's got less and less tumor burden, tumor metastatic burden. So I think we're gonna see uh, a better uh, um, prognosis, prognosis population in these trials, and we might find uh, who is the patient benefit in, in a large randomized trial and will have more information to decide and to, to choose the best therapy for our patients. Thank you so much. And, and, and I'd like to congratulate on it's such a huge effort to randomize patients to something so different as surgery or not. 
and and congratulate all all your team in, in such a great trial and, and thanking all your patients to providing data for us. Thank, thank you, you. Laura. Dr. Soren, if you'd like to close, please. Yeah, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you to inviting me to discuss this uh, this subject. It's very important. It's still there are a lot of unknowns. Uh, we are, I'm not trying to convince everybody to do the surgery. This is not my intention. But I would like to all the surgeons to consider the surgery if there is a patient may get the benefit. This is the question. We know that none of the studies, not my study, not all the studies, is the perfect. We cannot do the perfect randomized study. There's always a gap, there's always a question, but all the studies trying to answer some questions, which I think our study is answering some questions and the CMAS study is answering some questions as well. My intention in the study and all other ongoing studies is all the surgeons or the medical oncologists, traditional oncologists, shouldn't just leave the patients alone saying that you have a metastatic cancer, we are not going to do anything. In some point, maybe some patients, they may get the benefit to live longer and get better quality of life with no local region or recurrence or less local region recurrence. This is another thing that we should think about it because if the patient get the to primary tumor progress, their quality of life is not good and their normal life is not good as well. So again, thank you very much for being with you. I hope all Brazilian physicians stay safe and someday we may have face-to-face -face meeting, discuss more and enjoy. Uh, we appreciate that. So. The yeah. beach in Fortaleza. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're very welcome, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Metel, pode fechar, por favor. Obrigado, Laura. Stay safe. Stay safe, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Tchau, tchau, gente. Valeu, Boa noite. Muito obrigada, muito obrigada. O pessoal de casa, bom. perdão pela conexão do doutor Sora, né? E vocês viram que não foi fácil, mas deu tudo bem, no final das contas. Parabéns pelas foi... colocações, Laura. Perfeito, viu? Obrigado, Laura, hein? Foi ótimo. A gente teve essa dificuldade hoje por conta da internet dele, mas eu acho que foi bem legal. Parabéns, meninos, pelo, pelo canal, por, pela iniciativa. Parabéns mesmo. Muito legal. Muito obrigada pelo convite. A gente, convite. A gente Obrigado, te agradece por aparecer aqui, Laura. Tchau, tchau. Boa noite. Boa noite. Tchau, tchau. Boa noite. Tchau. Boa noite. Obrigado, Ari. Estou, estou saindo aqui também. Valeu, Ari.